by looking at the violent threats faced by a feminist critic for pointing out sexism in video games. Last week, Anita Sarkeesian was forced to cancel a planned lecture in Utah after threats of a shooting massacre. She was scheduled to speak at Utah State University when the university received an email threatening to carry out, quote, the deadliest shooting in American history at the event. The email sender wrote, quote, feminists have ruined my life and I will have my revenge. He used the moniker Mark Lapine, the name of a man who killed 14 women, most of them female engineering students, in a mass shooting in Montreal in 1989. Anita Sarkeesian canceled her talk after being told that under Utah law, Utah State Police could not prevent people from bringing guns to her lecture. A university spokesperson told the Standard Examiner newspaper the school had determined it was safe for Sarkeesian to speak because, quote, the threat we received is not out of the norm for this woman. Sarkeesian has long faced bomb, rape and death threats from online harassers opposed to her criticism of the ways in which women are depicted in video games. In August, she was forced to leave her home after an online harasser posted her address and threatened to kill her parents and, quote, rape her to death. Another harasser created a video game called Beat Up Anita Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian's viral web series on video games is titled Tropes vs. Women. This is a clip. the second part of our mini-series examining the women as background decoration trope in video games. I need to stress that this video comes with a content warning and is not recommended for children. The game footage I'll be showcasing will be particularly graphic and include scenes of extreme violence against women. I define the women as background decoration trope as the subset of largely insignificant, non-playable female characters whose sexuality or victimhood is exploited as a way to infuse edgy, gritty, or racy flavoring into game worlds. These sexually objectified female bodies are designed to function as environmental texture while titillating presumed straight male players. In our last video, we discussed the concept of sexual objectification and looked at a specific subset of non-essential female characters, which I classify as non-playable sex objects. In this episode, we will expand our discussion of the women as background decoration trope to examine how sexualized female bodies often occupy a dual role as both sexual playthings and the perpetual victims of male violence. Are you here for the whore? Are you daddy me? I have your money. Let her go! No! Take it up with Cesare! <laughs> the use of sexual or domestic violence as a form of scaffolding to prop up dark and edgy environments has become a pervasive pattern in modern gaming. Well, if it isn't the long lost Andrew Ryan. I'm sorry, Mr. Ryan. I didn't know. I didn't know Fontaine had something to do with it. I, what? What are you doing? No! No, don't, please! I love you, too! Don't, please, no! No! That was a clip from Anita Sarkeesian's web series Tropes vs. Women in Video Games. Since Anita launched her critique of misogyny in video games, some in the video game community have launched a relentless campaign of threats and harassment against her. To find out more, we go to San Francisco, where we're joined by Anita Sarkeesian, the media critic and executive director of Feminist Frequency, a video web series that explores representations of women in pop culture. Rolling Stone recently called her pop culture's most valuable critic. Anita, welcome to Democracy Now! Let's start by what happened or didn't happen last week at Utah State. Explain the threats and what you were going to Utah State for. Sure. Um, so the school received um, some threats against my life and of the students on Monday night. Uh, the threats were, as you had described, um, very much reminiscent of these copycat killers of um, these, you know, big 
uh, misogynist school massacres. I didn't actually find out about the threats until I landed at Salt Lake City uh, Airport on Tuesday afternoon, and I found out with everyone else um, through Twitter and through the media. So when I spoke to the, organiz the organizers of the event and the police, I wanted to know what security precautions they were taking. Um, it wasn't the first time I was threatened at an event, but this one was—the language was very— um, it was much more intense in terms of that sort of misogynist, anti-feminist attack. So, um, you know, the school said that they were going to take not allow backpacks in and have extra security. And when I asked about Utah's concealed gun laws, um, they said that they couldn't screen for firearms. Uh, I asked them if they could have uh, metal detectors or pat-downs, and they said no. Um, and that was just too big of a risk for me to take in terms of my life and that of the students when the threat was specifically about firearms. Now, the person signed their email threat, Mark Lapine. I wanted yeah. to go back to a Canadian news report about what became known as the Montreal Massacre. Um, this is an excerpt from the TV show 100 Huntley Street. December 6, 1989 started off like any other day, but ended in horror, forever being labeled in Canadian history as the Montreal Massacre. A young man identified later as Mark Lapine entered Le Col Polytechnique in Montreal, opening fire, killing 14 female engineering students before turning the 22 caliber gun on himself. This was the first school shooting of its kind in Canada. That report from 100 Huntley Street, Magdalene John in Canada. So, Anita Sarkeesian, for those who didn't know what that name meant um, in the email uh, that was sent to the Utah, Utah state officials, if you could take it from there. Uh, yeah, it, it was very much, um, you know, specifically referencing Mark Lapine as his hero, um, using his name, referencing this Montreal massacre about this mass shooting that was very specifically anti-feminist. He was he was he was going to kill and actually did kill these women because he considered them feminists and that you know feminists ruined their life his life apparently. Um, the the threat that we received at the school uh, last week was was exactly the same as that. Um, there was another threat that came in that mentioned Elliot Roger, which was um, a young man who uh, committed another school shooting at UC Santa Barbara earlier this year. And his manifesto was very much the same language of um, anti-women, anti-feminist, very deeply misogynist. Um, again, in that, what you're referring to, um, Elliot Roger uh, <clears throat> killing seven people, including himself, in a video posted hours before his rampage at a sorority house at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Um, Roger said he planned to attack, quote, you girls for what he called the crime of not being attracted to him. On the day of retribution, I am going to enter the hottest sorority house of UCSB. And I will slaughter every single spoiled, stuck-up, blonde slut I see inside there. That was Elliot Roger, the video he posted right before he killed seven people at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Um, so this decision that you made, uh, your response, Anita Sarkeesian, to the university saying, you get threats like this all the time, they, you, that they had no reason to up the security. Uh, that, <laughs> that was Im immensely frustrating. Um, you know, the school did take some security measures, but they didn't—I didn't think what they did was adequate for this type of threat. Um, you know, to say that I've received threats in the past uh, is— inconsequential. I mean, I think we need to take all of these threats seriously. There's a sort of sentiment that online harassment is not, you know, real, that we shouldn't take it seriously. But, you know, as you just showed, um, Elliot Roger had his manifesto online and his videos online before he actually took action. Um, so this is a larger culture of women, um, you know, one, not being believed about their experiences with online harassment, and when, you know, it is seen that they actually are being attacked in really vicious ways, it's just brushed off as, oh, it's just the Internet or, you know, it's just boys being boys, when that's really not what's happening here. These threats are very real, um, whether they are committed or not. 
We're going to break and then go to your larger critique in the gaming industry. Anita Sarkeesian, media critic, executive director of Feminist Frequency, a video that web series that explores representations of women in pop culture. The students at Utah State didn't get to hear what she had to say after she canceled her speech because of an email threat to the school that the shooter, uh, named for the Montreal massacre shooter, um, would make this the worst massacre in American history. Stay with us.